Hi, this is Michael Uslan. You're listening to Batman on Film. I'm vengeance. I have given a name to my pain. Welcome to episode number 109 of the Social Hour, a Batman on Film podcast. I am the host of this here Batman on Film podcast show, Bill Ramey, also the founder of Batman on Film 25 years ago, back in 1999. 1990. I don't, was I trying to, Ryan Lauer, help me out here. I'm, I'm getting... Mm-hmm. I'm getting uh, all wound up. I'm getting all geared up yeah. because of the 25th anniversary of Batman on That's Film. Right. Founded in 1998. Eight. There you go. 98. Uh, on a web TV. On a web I TV. I rarely talk about that. That's yeah. a secret story. It's a, it's a deep hole. Yeah. Uh, don't don't you miss days. Yeah. Some, the pre-episode 100 days where I could just fire back yes who's the dallas cowboy who's the dallas I, cowboy? I i was just thinking about that when i said 109 i was like yeah yeah can't do those numbers you know sports numbers anymore it's challenging to see if you really are a dallas cowboys fan yeah <laughs> yeah so uh <laughs> ruling I, still out on, on that one put me on a spot a few times but i, I usually would i could i came through in pulled the through end. yeah pulled through even i mean I mean, I'm sitting here wearing, yeah, uh, University of Michigan hoodie, um, and you could challenge me on stuff, and yeah, you'd have to take my, uh, my fan card away, God, with Michigan, because I mean, you put me on the spot like that, and yeah, I definitely, I'd fold. So, I think you you earned it time and again. Well, I, I would say with we, college football, um, since I mean, there is turnover in the NFL, obviously, but with free agency and whatnot, but numbers in pro sports, it just seems numbers become iconic to certain yeah. players. Yeah. And cause a lot of them, you know, especially when I was a kid growing up, everyone stayed with theirs with the same team. There wasn't free agency. So now you say 12 to me and I think Roger Staubach just, you know, boom, that was it. And so in college, you got a lot of turnover and, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, so numbers, I don't know if numbers are as, as well. And, and a lot of times if a player is that um, great, mm-hmm. then he goes on to the pro sports and a lot of times the number, whatever number they mm-hmm. are in pro sports is what's always attached to them. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, related Tom Brady. I think a lot of people just assume his number twelve. That's what he was mm-hmm. in in uh, college, and his, now he was number ten mm. at Michigan. Yeah, it's crazy. A, a dec- I think, man. And he didn't light it up. Um, he got him their their last Rose Bowl victory. He has uh, Brady. And then, yeah, you know, so I think whatever, sixth round pick by the Patriots. And then, yeah, thoughts and feelings along on the guy. Like, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm like, yeah, he's a, one of the greatest, if not the as quarterback. Yeah. What a story. From there, Michigan. There are, there, that, are more, State. there are more storied Michigan football players. Mm-hmm. There are more storied Michigan football quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Than Tom Brady, right? Yeah, who didn't in the NFL just didn't get didn't even get to college heights, like uh, as far as uh, 
success and stuff. Yeah. I miss football already. Don't you? Yes. <laughs> I was telling Pete, <laughs> and I did the, Pete was like, he was all excited. It's like, yeah, spring training here for baseball. And I'm like, dude, the, the weekend after the Super Bowl is like, like the worst weekend of the year for me because there's no football, no, no college, no pro. And I'm looking at, you know, um, five, six months now, mm -hmm. but with the NFL nowadays, it's, it's all year. I mean, they, they broadcast the freaking combine. Yeah. On, on, on TV, you know, that's my, I, I went to a buddy's yesterday, I stopped in, um, and he was waiting for, Michigan IU uh basketball game yeah. to start. And he had the combine on. And I'm like, yeah, I don't watch this. <laughs> like, I'm good. I watch the games. I don't like watching preseason even with NFL. Which about you do, don't you? Me? Do I like preseason? Yeah, do you watch, do I the, watch the preseason? I do. No, but I don't I I'll watch it. Um like I'll watch the, the starters. Gotcha. But I don't know. I don't sit. I don't know if I sit. No, I don't sit down and watch three hour preseason football game. Yeah. And that's I, like, I just don't at all. You know, I have season tickets to the Cowboys. So their preseason games are the same price as the regular season games. Right. So oh. depend, depending, <laughs> depending on the year, there's either one preseason game or two preseason games. And it's just like uh, I could take out a couple hundred bucks and set it set it on fire because mm -hmm. I don't go and I can't even give them away. I have given them away. Can't even give I, them away. I must wow. have to pay someone to to <laughs> take them. Um, honestly, so God, it's that's nuts. So anyway. There's your well, NFL talk. Yeah. Film. We'll move from uh, manly fandom. Yeah. To a little geek fandom Man here. Manly? <laughs> yeah. Manly fandom, too. We're talking manly? sports. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sports, uh, beer, boudin. Yeah. Yes. Gumbo. 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 <laughs> Meat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um talk a little batman okay so i i posted last week on twitter and facebook i was like man can't believe it's been a year since the opening weekend of the batman which meant it was the weekend of the batman on film watch party for the batman yes. it was one year ago this past weekend crazy huh mm -hmm. yeah my first like watch party. I think yeah. I know Pete's gone down to Texas and Wonder yeah. Woman. So did uh Holzman. Haas, I don't know. They had like a little watch That's... party for in a Joker in New York that those three guys attended together Haas, too. But I mean uh, Ryan Haas hosted a satellite there you go. with uh, in Raleigh, I think. Raleigh, North Carolina. Or Okay. I forget which film. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's one of the films that should go uh, unspoken here. So, unmentioned. okay. Yeah, unmentioned, yes. Um, but yeah, so one year ago. Yeah. That was a, a good party. event. Good event all day. Um, well, that weekend, because I said I, I put a couple of pictures up in the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one where I finally met the Italian. Um Peter Vera. This was this was the day before his name changed to Boudin Pockets. Yeah. Um, met him at the airport finally in person. Haas had met before in person, but met him there. And then the BOF Express came and picked us up. Yeah. Bill came strolling in. And it was weird because even in the airport, speakers started playing uh, the Dark Knight theme as you came strolling up. That was timed out perfectly. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, I mean, then we went, we saw the office the next day. The BOF office. Mm -hmm. All the, like everything Bill's been collecting. I don't know how you're going to fit more in there, but 
you'll find a way. <laughs> well, I was talking to announcer Rachel yesterday in here, actually, yesterday morning. Hey, Joe, why don't you come to my office and sit down? Let's talk. <laughs> yeah, she was looking around going, she went, it's going to be an MF for packing this yeah. stuff up when we move again. And I was like, and I was like, well, yeah, but at least I don't have to worry about it because you're doing it. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> that didn't go She kind of hilarious, well. didn't she? <laughs> yeah. Now, here, here's how she'll work. Um, she'll say, you're going to pack your office. Mm -hmm. But she will come in and take over because I do not do it. I will not do it the right way. You I can, I'm, you yeah, understand? yeah. You, I can, can see you, that. Yeah, my my lady is very good at visualizing and packing things up and remembering. We have we have quite a few things in storage, and I do a pretty like I do a good job too because we're, we're very much like a team players. Like both of yeah. us contribute and whatever. Yeah. But she's just got a memory of just like oh yeah, that box there has this 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 and this that box there has this, 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 this. And I'm like, I, I don't know what's where. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, I'm, and I feel like that's why what you just said, that's what she does in, in packing is like, okay, you're just kind of throwing stuff in there. Yeah. Let me, let me take over and do yeah. it correctly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, that was, uh, and it, it, uh, also besides the party, it's like, yeah, it's all, we're past a year mm -hmm. with the Batman. What do you always say? Enjoy the ride. Yes. Because then here you are a year later. Yeah. Away away from it. Away from that mm -hmm. uh that really fun party um at the uh at the bar and then at the theater and then the after party and then the after after party. Um mm -hmm. and then we're all back home. Just like pff, a yeah. weekend just flew. Yeah. And then we're like, Well, where's the when's the next Batman movie? <laughs> where's yeah. Batman? I miss Batman. Yeah, it, it's I always say because we go, oh, I can't wait. I, I it, it's never going to get here. I can't wait for it. Like I'm looking at the countdown for the Batman Part Two. It's 900 and some odd days until the movie. Well, that's going to be here before you know it and gone. Mm -hmm. Do you have? And we'll just say since you've had the the website. Mm -hmm. Um, and this this is be hard. You could say I don't know, and that's an acceptable answer do you have a, a a movie a batman movie that you feel like was the quickest ride if you would say of like every it just pre-production post-production release of movie that that just came whoosh. Ooh, it'd be the dark knight yeah because of Begins was so um, nondescript. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I was just gonna guess if I had to guess, I'd have, I'd have said, "Do you think Dark Knight?" Because there's so much yeah. all the time. Yeah, and <clears throat> it was just, you know, it was not long after. I mean, less than a year. Um, well, basically about a year later that we got the word that there was going to be the sequel. Mm -hmm. And then it just, you know, then Heath Ledger casting and about the same time. And it was just, then they started that uh, viral campaign. The Why mm -hmm. So Serious viral campaign. And it was just, and then it, it just became it, not on the, not on the level of Batman 89, but it became a bit of a, uh, phenomenon you know um, yeah a culture phenomenon and yeah it, boom and that's been geez what now it's also a year or a celebration this year 15 years yeah 15 years ago it's 15 years ago Nuts. begins as 18 you see what i'm saying yeah Look, next thing you know boom you're you're next thing you know we're all going to be in the nursing home we're going to be like oh, yeah. remember when the batman I mean, came out 30 years yeah. ago yeah <laughs> you're you're looking that 
two decades since yeah you know since uh it's wild uh the dark knight trilogy so but and now with the batman we're already in we're into that we're into that <clears throat> next phase we're we're past the initial you know when the movie comes out and the movie's there so you experience the movie and you watch it and you watch it several times and it, that lasts a few more you know a few months and then it kind of dwindles down to you watch it every so often and you don't hear anything, but we're already past that phase of not hearing anything. We know the title. We know um, when the, we know the release date. We know that Reeves has pretty much finished the script and is already starting preliminary pre-production. Confirmed, uh, which you posted on BOF, yeah, going to start we, filming in November this year. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah, the Batman Part Two is already. I mean, it's most... really think it's just a little over a half a year from going into filming. Yeah. So that means in the next several months we're going to be getting casting news. Which did we not? I think you and I talked about it here on a social hour. Ex, uh, put to guess expecting when to start here maybe some big uh casting mm. or story yeah. um, or something like that and we said summer and i th yeah. think it's fixing for because i even looked at sometimes you know dipping back and i think it was around summer uh 2010 i think was when we got tom hardy as bane and hathaway's Catwoman mm -hmm. for dark knight rises which started filming mm -hmm. in 2011 mm -hmm. um I think Ledger was, you know, he was in 2006 and they Summer. filmed in 2007. I remember so it's like it. The pattern yeah. here seems to fit. So it just seems like I know we're it talking was... films from long ago, but there's yeah. a pattern here. Yeah. So I was um, at San Diego Comic Con when that broke about Ledger and the, you know, the title. What was your cosplay that year? <laughs> uh, I <laughs> I went. Do you remember Captain Kangaroo? No. Oh, you kids! I'm, I'm, I've got the Google right here. Got the Google machine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the picture that popped up. Oh my god! Yeah, that was you, Bill. I actually. I was I went as <laughs> I was cosplaying as Mr. Green Jeans, who was a character on that okay. show. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> that was you a kid show. You have any pictures that you can share of your uh, Mr. Green Jeans? No, I do not. Ah, uh, bummer. That's yeah. too bad. Yeah, of course I'm kidding, but. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know. I pulled that out of nowhere. Captain yeah, Kangaroo. Yeah, well done. Uh, I watched that as a kid. It was on CBS in the mornings. It was a kid's show. I loved it. Mr. Moose. Mr. Green Jeans. <laughs> Captain right. Kangaroo, Bob Keishan. Yes, okay. Um, so anyway, yeah, we're on, the, we're on a roll for the Batman mm -hmm. Part 2. We'll be getting casting soon, and then we'll start. People will start writing the movie in their mind once mm -hmm. we hear. Um, if we hear roles, the who are being uh, roles that are being filled, who, characters that will be in the film. So, and it will also be interesting to see who makes it from yeah. the Penguin into the Batman Part Two. Speaking of. The penguin. It is filming. Um, I don't have. I don't know the specifics, but I do know a prominent crew member, like the cinematographer, or someone in that you know costume mm -hmm. design, someone like that. Um, posted on social media, and I didn't put this on Batman on film. It was I thought it was. I just didn't do it. Um posted a picture of some sort of it looked like something that was you know a prop or something on set i mean what i don't know you know mm -hmm. what it was exactly that you just said you know we started filming in new york or 
so it's filming and uh that's another thing you know with the 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 road to the batman part two is that there's a pit stop on this one called the penguin on hbo yeah that is going to be like a bridge between the two we haven't experienced that with the batman film ever no and that's and that's cool and i think somebody had made a comment in the view of facebook group and i think it's it's important to emphasize here too um they'd ask some sort of question about reeves's involvement and you mm-hmm. said that he's involved in everything with with this yes right yep so there you have it if you're if, if somebody's listening and they're questioning it's like no this is Everybody likes to say the blank verse. Yes, it's the Batman verse, but it's also the Reeves verse Mm -hmm. where it's kind of running through him. He's in charge Mm -hmm. of it all. So the the Penguin is fitting in with the Batman story. Like it's a chapter Mm -hmm. of Matt Reeves' The Batman Story. Yes, 100%. And I'm, I'm really curious visually. It just... Anytime, I think Chicago now, just be, because of the Dark Knight, but then a little bit of the Batman too. But it just seems like it makes sense if you're going to have Gotham that you're going to shoot some in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think the Batman shot anything in New York. I think it was London. It was the uh, stage. It was Chicago. Was it there wasn't anything in London or in New York for the Batman? Was there? I'm not sure. Was there any, you know, what they call that? Um, second crew or yeah, what you know what I'm you know what I mean? Um, but was there was some exterior the, the second... shots? Anything they shot in New York? So it, it's a little surprising to me, but I'm curious on the look of the movie because they didn't. Because of those locations that Reeves shot the Batman with, and like, because it's, I mean, it's part of Reeves's thing that it's going to look like it fits in and it's an extension of the Gotham that we were introduced to in the movie. But it being like a TV series, and like, I feel like it's going to, you know, grounded. I don't think there's, I don't feel like there's going to be a ton of like, hey, we're in front of green screens sort of deal. They're going to do a lot of, you know, like on the ground grittiness from New York. There was, he did um, more so than, way more so than Nolan in The Dark Knight was with the Batman, with Reeves, a blending real, yeah, you know, real shooting on location combined with the uh, uh, soundstage set work and some you know cgi and blending and really creating a unique gotham mm-hmm. yeah especially with that you know i just I, for lack of a better term i call it you know that the, the mandalorian process mm-hmm. you know uh, using the these the monitors these huge ass uh hd high def screens instead of uh instead of green screen work so yeah uh, it doesn't. I, there's nothing like okay, they're shooting in New York. It's going to look different. I don't. I don't. I don't think we're going to blink an eye as far as. Mm-hmm. And we'll probably see more of Gotham. Yeah, you know? um, which is also cool. Uh, you know, a mob war going to be taking place, I assume, because um, as we long speculated. Yeah, how Brian, many times did we bring it up here? what you're about to say i thought it was a (laughs) no-brainer didn't you Mm -hmm. i mean i'm not even going to pretend like um that i had inside info and i was i I told you first you know some of that bullshit i knew this but i couldn't tell you yeah yeah it's uh it was just obvious that yeah it was it just felt like all but confirmed and cast sal maroney will be in the penguin as a character Mm-hmm. And the great Clancy Brown is uh, has nabbed that role in the Penguin. Clancy Brown, otherwise known as Mr. Krabs from 
SpongeBob SquarePants. Obviously. That's how I know. Yeah. And I think he also voiced uh, what's that character? Lex Luthor and the Oh, uh, that guy. Yeah. Lex and Luthor. Gotcha. Okay. I can tell you this with all him. honesty. I watched I have not watched a lot of Superman the animated series nor have I watched very much of anything he would be in as Lex with like maybe I don't even know if he was ever in any Justice League of the Justice League animated stuff. I'm assuming he probably was at some point. But I have watched me a whole lot of SpongeBob SquarePants. So I am familiar with him. And if for some Mr. reason Rats. people people need explanations, like Bill, you watched a lot of SpongeBob, you had children. Uh, exactly. SpongeBob was a go to, correct? Yes. Which there's yes. nothing wrong. If you didn't have children, you watched SpongeBob. But my daughter, uh, my oldest child mm -hmm. was a was is a SpongeBob SquarePants super fan. She's almost 27 now. So she still will send me like memes of, or we'll have a, you know, an exchange on a text exchange and she'll make a point with a SpongeBob meme. If Jeff, whatever nice. it's called. So, yeah. Um, but I, you know, I guess what's that, that Batman Superman movie, you know what I'm talking about? The animated uh -huh. one. Uh -huh. um, yeah. That's probably the most Clancy Brown Lex that I've seen. Gotcha. Um, and he's done, and he and he does. He's a character actor that you that shows yeah. up in a lot of sorts of stuff, not just. That's what I was going to say too. Is I mean, I'm just going through to see if there's anything of, if there's a big notable to jump out. Yeah, you know that like live action that he was in. I mean, he was in three episodes of Lost mm -hmm. um, back in the day. He did uh, in the Batman, the animated cartoon series. He did Mister Freeze, Luther, yes. yeah, Bane. So like the guy, if somebody's listening, they still don't recognize. If you just like look him up, I think even his face, which is really funny, because he's got such his resume on IMDb is really long, um, and he's done so much voice work. I think you'd still recognize his face, though. He's uh, someone you you see and you go, I see yeah, him. I've seen that guy. I've, I've seen, seen him, him in. Before. I've seen him in some things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I and I do and I can. I mean, I'm kind of with you. It's not like I can listen, but like, oh yeah, and he was great. This and just start listing all this stuff. But it's just like a familiar character mm -hmm. actor, and I think he's good. Mm -hmm. So this was. It was kind of fun. Maybe funny. I don't know. That is this announcement came on a Friday afternoon. Yeah, that's uh, usually a news dump day. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's cool because I mean he was cast. We, you and I, you know, been wondering part of the excitement, like you say, with the with casting stuff. This is part. This is an extension of the Batman. Um, it's Maroni. So yeah, it was. I, I wonder who will be cast as Maroni. And so I think mm -hmm. this is a good pick. Well, it's it, it was just a no brainer because, uh, with the it, it would be it was clear that his conviction would would end up getting overturned because he was convicted with mm -hmm. uh you know some suspect uh shenanigans in gotham with, yeah with falcone and uh Jeez. the da and the police you know fixing it mm -hmm. so his conviction would be overturned he'd be released from prison he'd come back to gotham falcone is dead there's a power vacuum yes you know and then you've got you've got the other falcones who have been cast mm -hmm. in the penguin. And then you've got Colin Farrell playing Oz. Um, he's already, you know, at the, you know, in the Batman, he's, you know, kind of taken claim to the, the mantle of, of the, the boss of, of Gotham. So, you know, I got to explain that the penguin to uh, my lady. She didn't know that that series was coming or anything. Yeah. And I was like, okay, to I got to break it to sound credible and not just in the sense of like, it's the Batman, you need to watch it because I like Batman. It's like, no, I need to pitch this to her yeah. as here's this new series that I think I'm going to be invested in. And I just kind of broke it down quickly like that of 
you know, the penguin, he's kind of caught in the middle of like a gang war or something or mob war. It's going to be on HBO Max and a drama. And she was quickly like, oh, I'd watch that. And I'm like, damn right you'd watch that but all right good answer there we yeah. go okay yeah <laughs> we're gonna right. have some sunday night we're gonna have some sunday night viewings when that when that launches so now you know that's i'm sure like you feel similar where you're kind of like can't okay, need to i need to pitch this to announce to rachel and not have her roll her eyes because it's just batman but actually you can tell like she's invested like oh yeah i'd watch that that sounds good yeah or, like there's a oh yeah i'll watch it because i'll go with you as opposed to no, she wants to see this. If this was and something so when you pitch that, and it's like, ooh, she's a okay. Best. Got her. Here's the difference. If this was something, okay, like she had zero interest in Peacemaker. Okay. Okay. She mm-hmm. had zero interest in anything that would have um, super powered people in it. Mm-hmm. In terms of like uh, some kind of comic book adaptation, right? Um, but this she, she will she'll have interest in. Yeah. Well, she'll at least she'll at least watch it. Okay, I'll put mm-hmm. it that way, because the because of the Batman, she liked the Batman. She likes she liked the Dark Knight trilogy. You know, so this would be more something she'd watch if it was something more fantastical. Eh, she'd be out. So yeah, um, it'll be interesting. Like I wa- I just watched um, I just binged that freaking. The Last of Us. You watch that on HBO? Not yet. I'm kind of okay. just waiting, and I'll probably just blast through and binge it too. It took me about, it took me a couple, maybe a couple, ten days, two two weeks, maybe going through a couple episodes a night. But uh, I went through that first season pretty quick. She, I was watching. She's going, this sucks, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. And she was just on her phone, you know. While I was w- w- would watch it. And um, that's after it, it took me forever to get through Peaky Blinders. You watch Peaky Blinders? Mm-mm. I'll recommend that one. And you recommend Scare- that one? Yeah. Scarecrow's mm-hmm. in it. So is Bane. Killian Murphy and uh, Tom oh, yeah. Hardy. Yeah. So anyway. Um, so yeah. it's a, We're going to have it's it's going to have we're going to have it some sort of uh, uh, mob war. And the penguin, um, and it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top, huh? Is that am I writing this series in my head before it gets here? I mean, how dare you? Yeah, how dare you? Who do you think you are? You're just going to be disappointed. Then you're going to go on the Twitter and you're, you're yeah. going to complain because it is not what you wrote in your head. Yes. And then you will get your bat fan card taken away. Yeah, that's what happens. You know better, Bill. Don't you do yeah. that? Um, but I don't know. That's it's. I think we can expect good HBO crime drama with the yeah. show. Where the story is going to go, I don't think I have. I, I I don't like guessing when I'm like I have no freaking clue. Then I'm not even going to guess mm-hmm. and open my mouth and make a fool of myself because I have no idea where it'll end up i can't even say like by the end of it there's got to be this person is in power because I, I, they, yeah i don't know I don't um know. <laughs> it's it's just i don't think it's uh you know a stretch this to, to assume okay balcone's dead maroney's out of prison you've got um sophia yes is a character sophia falcone and, and alberto and Alberto, yes. And there's another character that's part of the Falcone crime family. Uh, Vito, is that who I'm thinking about here? Is part of the the Penguin? Johnny Vitti? Johnny he Vitti. cast, did he? I think so. Did he? Okay. I think so. I'll go to my friend the Google. Vitti, yeah. That Google machine is something else, man. It is. Um. So I'll go back to what I was saying. It's just it. I mean, it's clear there's going to be some kind of fight over for the power of Gotham Underworld. You know, yeah. the mob. Who's going to be the Who's going to be the top mob person? Could mm-hmm. be Sophia uh, in. And you are Gotham correct. City. Yeah, um, I don't think there's nothing cast, but I'm pretty sure it came out of that Johnny Vitti is going to appear. Yeah, in, in a series. So yeah, you're uh, you're right. I hope he has that terrible bowl cut. 
Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Mo I Howard. Mean, more, Mo Howard more, <laughs> yes. All right, Ron. Let's pause for just a moment for these words. More to your point. Um like there's there's just a lot to pull from there of like the it's pretty clear you got the Maronis, you got the Falcones. Mm -hmm. And the kids are coming that would just find the like believe that what was their father's is rightfully theirs. So they should mm -hmm. they should just inherit the the power. And then Maroni and you know, surprise other guests guess surprise other characters and stuff too. They're like, No, 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 that's not how it works. And then how's Penguin gonna manipulate them or try to manipulate them and like that's great. Like mm -hmm. that's that's oozing HBO drama. So I wonder how much besides mobsters, gangsters, mm -hmm. mafia folk, how much is the Gotham City Police Department? What about, you know, or the district attorney's office? Huh. You know, crime fighters. That's right. Going to be involved in the penguin as well because we really haven't got any casting. It wouldn't shock me if uh, Jeffrey Wright shows up as Jim Gordon at some point. Um, we also we've already heard scuttlebutt that Robert Pattinson was going to show up. It's you know, I, I would call it ex probably extended cameo is either Bruce Wayne yeah. or Batman. I liked what and, you said of maybe in the same episode you get a glimpse of Bruce Wayne and Batman. Because mm -hmm. it's almost like, well, we got Robert Pattinson for for three days. Let's let's milk it. Let's get it both. Let's get both. Um, but you said DA. I mean Rachel Dawes. Yes, maybe she's all resurrected connected. as it's a all character. Connected. It's all connected. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is the yeah. origin of Rachel Dawes, actually. Yeah. Um. So you mentioned before we started recording that you know Bill Coulson. Mm -hmm. No longer with us in the Batman universe. Who was the DA? Hey, are you the DA? Aren't you the DA? Mm -hmm. Um, what a pathetic guy that guy was, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, I, I like this girl. <laughs> <laughs> Which I like you when I too. say that, at major props to Peter Sarsgaard. Um, yeah, great performance. This is why. Yeah. Because there's also sometimes of like, I just don't like watching this person on screen. And you're like, no, you're yeah. not supposed to like watch. You're not supposed to like them. And I'm like, that's not what I'm saying. And I'm saying, yeah. I don't like the performance. And it was like, I don't like this guy, but I like no, I like watching this guy that I don't like because he's I just, just doing a really good job. <laughs> I just thought he was a pathetic person, you know? Yep. And he did a great job of performing that mm -hmm. very well. So yeah. Um, well, we know he's no longer with us. Um, R.I.P. He is in. Uh, lost his head, so to speak. Yeah, lost his, <laughs> lost a lot. You know. Yeah. Um, depending on what time it is, it could be either here. Or, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so there is going to have to be a new D.A. And isn't there in Batman lore? A Gotham City district attorney who's a, a very prominent Batman character. I mentioned this right before like we started recording, too, of we are just kind of in the situation we were in after we saw Batman Begins in 2005. Mm -hmm. Of there's DA dies in the movie. Mm -hmm. they, there's a vacant DA spot in Gotham City. Who are you going to call? The Batman. There's a vacancy in the DA department. Who are you going to call? Like, it just <sighs> makes too much sense. And even maybe more sense than Maroney. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as we're like, we're just waiting for final confirmation and casting. But it almost seems like, it, yeah, it's coming. Uh, that's how I felt with Dent when Coulson died. Yeah. I'm like, oh sweet, Dent's coming in the sequel then. <laughs> yeah. So of course we're we're clearly uh hinting at Harvey Dent. So that's more this is our hypothetical. Could Harvey Dent be in the penguin? I say yes, he could be. It would be it would be I 
this is now that's my opinion. Just this is all opinion. It'd be a good way to introduce the character and and then extend him a bit into the Batman part two. I don't need two face just boom, you know, out of the gate. Yeah, and I think that's something. So a couple different thoughts. That's something that you and I have both said uh, for quite a while now. <clears throat> with we would like Harvey Dent. Batman year one. There isn't a ton of Dent screen time, but you at least get the little hint that like Dent and Batman are working secretly together and Gordon is unaware. And then that's extended for a lot of the long Halloween and the three of them working together before Harvey's turn. And I, I do, I think it's, it's kind of rich in drama of Dent is working. I mean, it's, it's kind of the same with, uh, Flash Thompson in, in uh, Spider-Man lore of Flash Thompson doesn't like Peter Parker, but Flash Thompson loves Spider-Man. And mm-hmm. the irony there is really funny. Dent's not as much of an a-hole as Flash Thompson, but I do sometimes like the irony a little bit of like Dent is kind of like Bruce Wayne is kind of this, you know, this rich mm-hmm. playboy. and kind of is like annoyed by him, but then he's working in cahoots with the Batman. Like that's kind of fun to me, but I also some what you know some comic stories have done is Harvey and Bruce have a rich history of like mm-hmm. they are allies and stuff too, but mostly for me it's just like I think you can stretch out Harvey Dent as D A Harvey Dent for quite a while and you can get a lot of good mm-hmm. story stuff before we go into Two Face territory and I really mm-hmm. hope we get a lot of Harvey Dent D A, which sounds really yes. weird I know that it's like I don't want him to become the villain I just feel don't need to rush into it i'm like yeah yeah really build up harvey dent so that if and when that turn comes it is it is kind of a gut punch it, you know it could be in this this batman universe that it it would make sense for when harvey becomes two-faced now you got maroney and you know in comic book history maroney is the one who scarred dent Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that didn't, that wasn't the case in the dark Knight. I'm going to, I'm going to come back compared to the dark Knight in a minute. Um, yeah. I'll just do it now because I, you know, a lot of people would say a criticism quote unquote of the dark Knight is that, well, uh, they should have kept two face alive so he could come back in the sequel. And I'm like, that is so typical comic book you know, set up a sequel type thinking instead of um, it's a cliche, you know. So he was good. He became Two-Face. Now he's going to be the villain. Um, it, it made would it would make no sense. His if story Harvey, was, was yeah, over. Is over. And it would, he would not, what, would that Two-Face become a mob boss in Gotham? No, because it didn't fit that character. Yeah. No. He was he's like a one man vengeance mission mm-hmm. of just going after the people that did him wrong mm-hmm. and then felt betrayed at the very end. And so what was the, the climax of his story was he was confronting his two allies mm-hmm. and like you guys need to suffer like I had to. Mm-hmm. And that like that's the end. And I, I thought that too, because I know the rumblings, yeah. you know, was that the third one would be him as two face or whatever. And it was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, cool. And then yeah, as the movie played out, it was like no, this iteration, we don't need gimmicky. This is not gimmicky two-face obsessed with the number two. Mm-hmm. Like it, it fit his story. He was done. Mm-hmm. And I was completely okay with that. Yeah. Me too. hundred percent. Because it was like talking to back when I was talking to Chris Nolan. Hey, ah, no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> it was just another Wednesday uh, for Bill of, Ramey. You know, him saying, and, and also um, uh, Jonathan Nolan, that, Chris had told them, okay, don't hold anything back. Mm-hmm. Tell us, tell a story. We don't need to save anything for a sequel. Okay. And so yeah. as it went along, maybe the plan was for Harvey to become two face in the third film preliminary plan. But when they wrote the story, I mean, the, the, the arc, the character arc is Harvey's 
in the dark night. And it made, it made sense. And I, I you know, I was like, I tell people, he's not going to become a mob boss. Can you see this guy going on in the next film? He's a mob boss. Come on now. It makes no sense to his motivations or anything, but yeah, that's why I bring it up. I could see the Batman universe version of two face kind of going that organized crime crime route mob boss because of just what Reeves is setting up. You want to do something different. Um, yeah. With, with two, with two face than what we got in of course the dark Knight, And then even from the, the crazy, you know, version of, in Batman Forever, very comic booky version. Um so what's your thoughts on that? I could definitely see them. <clears throat> so I'm I don't I'll, I'll say I don't see him becoming a mob boss with a bunch of you know these minions and with suits on that are one, yeah, one, half one half. color, you know, half and half like you know all that stuff. But I can see him uh, moving into organized crime. I'm of route. two minds. Okay. <laughs> because one I've considered two rules of TV slash streaming and movies have have changed mm -hmm. uh you know in the past decade plus to where Harvey Dent, Sal Maroney, the one may feel too big for TV series. And Sal Maroney isn't mm -hmm. a big enough name that you mm -hmm. can't have him as a regular even in a TV series. Uh, but it's not TV, it's HBO. So mm -hmm. Harvey Dent also isn't Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. So then you take it and that's like, well, maybe he would work. The Penguin himself is, I mean, in live action, he was born on TV, Burgess mm -hmm. Meredith. Uh, I So I, that's where I'm like, hmm, I don't know if they would save for the movie or to really get the most out of this character. If you do really build story in a series, not as the star, but he's another part of that, you know, uh, yeah, that's a uh, deep 100%. well of story for Gotham city to really build and not saying just using the series. It's like, they wouldn't do the series unless there's like, you know, it's important. They, you know, it's it's important, but then build on it for the Batman part two, where you know everything can maybe really explode with like Harvey mm -hmm. Dent. So personally, I would like to see him in the Penguin series. I'm not going to watch the Penguin series looking for Harvey Dent, though. Yeah. Like it's the Penguin. Um but I I, I don't know how you turn DA Harvey Dent into mob two face that would be interesting to see in live action though because granted disregarding feelings on Tommy Lee Jones in 95 mm -hmm. is a different time but whatever the movie that we got mm -hmm. two face already was we got a small snippet of the acid in the face but otherwise he mm -hmm. already was and it was comic booky through and through two face in the dark night was DA tragic story vengeance mission. I'm thinking Batman the animated series Two Face felt a little, you know, mob ish. Mm -hmm. That could be that could be cool to see that in live action for sure. Yeah. Cause it would be done in a realistic fashion. So it wouldn't be completely far fetched. Um I'd be interested to see that eventually. Uh I think the series, because if like I don't know we Dent and Maroney like they're connected in history um the Dark Knight did turn it a little bit that it wasn't Maroney that got him scarred mm -hmm. I feel like I don't know anything I bet that Maroney's going to be responsible for if Harvey Dent's introduced if Harvey Dent becomes two-faced I feel like Maroney's going to be responsible because that's just that's comic book lore. Mm -hmm. Don't know what way, but I feel like somehow. Yeah, I I have no idea how they would make sense of him becoming a mob, like a head of mob fighting for. What mob if they just? Something. What if they take? Um, what if they just take cues from Long Halloween, 
and uh, Dark Victory. Like m much more. I mean, you would have much to more get to direct than Dark Knight did Long Halloween when it comes to yeah. Harley. I mean, you would have to get to a point where they they snuff out. I mean, there's still the traditional mob, but then you have the rise of the quote unquote freaks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and a dent taking that role. I'm not. I'm not a creative. I don't yeah. know how you do it. And this is a very realistic world. So it'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see the whole thing. Do they bring in Harvey Dent? I just, like I said, I can't, I can't not see Reeves yeah. using Harvey Dent. Yeah. In this at some point. And also, uh, uh, you know, if, if he becomes two face, if, and when, what is his, what is his thing? What kind of Two-Face is he? You know, I don't think he's, I don't think he's Dark Knight Two-Face. Certainly no. not a vengeance guy. And then if he's introduced in the Penguin series, what's his relation with the Penguin? Because mm -hmm. it's the Penguin series. Mm -hmm. How does that relationship Well, that, And that's begin, the thing. It's just, know? I mean, how, how much is the justice system in Gotham going to be play a role in the penguin, the police in the, like, in the district? You know what I mean? Cause I think you I, have I feel, to have it. I feel like there's going to be, it's going to be kind of deep because with the, you know, the reveal of renewal in the Batman, when it comes to like, law in gotham utter i guess law and order like kind of utter chaos yeah because i mean you know, even says gotham's flooded uh martial law i think is what he said martial law, and then he's national guards in mm -hmm. so you know as far as like so gcpd itself just on that front has their hands full mm -hmm. also the revelation of gcpd having corrupt people within it Oh, they're having to, and now that disrupts, you know, Gotham law, which means, and then the, and then you go to, okay, the source of that is the, you know, um, the DA department of the city. Oh, which by the way, had one of its DA members involved in this corruption and he's also mm -hmm. dead. So it's all in shambles of how do we get everything back on track Wait, in and who's these departments? And that's like, man, that's a lot of. Whew, there's a lot you can pull from all that. Who is who is there in the DA office that wasn't on the take and and part mm -hmm. of the part of the you know the jig and same for the the police department because there we know in the police department there were good cops. We saw them. We actually saw them out when you know when they when they're when Batman is taking Falcone out. I always took it is that when they opened the doors open, swung open and they were out there, the cops that were there, those were the good cops, the Jim those Gordon Gordon's. cops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're like, Hey, he's part hey. of Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wayne, <laughs> Mr. Wayne Martinez. He popping yes. up with the penguin. He better. Or is he, or is he big screen material? There needs to be a officer Martinez spinoff. That's right. James Gunn did tweet that out. It's the Mar you know, DCU, aka Martinez verse. Yeah. He so needs, uh I I just I we'll see more of Martinez too, but for sure. Reeves said enough in the commentary how much he liked yeah. the the actor that played yeah. him. So I mean, yeah, I feel like there's no way he's not. And also he he kind of was um he's Gordon's right hand man kind of mm -hmm. in the movie. So I yeah. How does he not return? The Batman so part two, Martinez returns. Yeah. <laughs> it's there just, you, you know, so much. I can go on and on. We'll, we'll wind this up. Like, yeah, you know, um, 
where where does Gordon does he get promoted? When does he become commission? You know, it's a whole, all of these start wondering how what's what's going to be the the progression here. Martinez is Martinez become a detective. I mean, I mean, just all all fun, all sorts of things, ideas in, a, in my mind. You know, in a way, I don't envy. We'll it will just start with Reeves. I don't envy him. In the he just got he just drove down the Batman street Mm -hmm. and it's like now he has like seven different roads to choose from to continue the story. I don't envy him that he has to pick one lane and go, you know, because there is Mm -hmm. just like what we we were saying and stuff was, you know, then that triggered like, oh, what about this? Oh, what about this? Oh, what about this? Or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like we can think of all these hypotheticals, but there's only going to be one route. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't envy him of having to choose one way to go. But I mean, he's going to go with because he's a storyteller. He's mm-hmm. going to go with what's the best story. Um, it, 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 what did I say at the beginning? Enjoy the ride. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm not writing it in my head. They go completely bonkers, and he, Harvey Dent, is just introduced as Two Face. I'll accept it and see how it plays out in the story too. Yeah, that's and a so, whole nother. Yeah. It's a a whole, I, don't, I don't think I'll go with. I, I don't. Yeah, I'm not involved. I don't know. I'm just a fan. So mm-hmm. it's exciting, though. That we're yeah, we're, uh, we're here. This mm-hmm. is the, really the this is the fun time. This is the very beginning of a really fun time. The speculation. Just don't write the movie in your head. OK, yeah. that's my advice. OK, to speculate. But don't be so Judge. set on a certain things happening to where if they don't happen the way you want, then oh, it sucks. You know that kind Judge of nonsense. Judge what's presented mm-hmm. to you, because I just think a like with some it, it's I don't know. It is just just a lot of what was presented is not what was I had in my head. So then therefore got to knock mm-hmm. it off like knock off a grade point or something and not give it a fair shot because it's just not what you thought they were going to do in your head. Is I think you can't expect somebody to think like you. <laughs> like, I don't know. How does it work in the, in the mm-hmm. story? And so when do you think we get a, uh, I'll say a trailer for the penguin series. Hmm. Well, I can go the easy route and say sometime this year. Yeah. Uh, I think more difficult route. Maybe summer, summerish time. Hmm. Cause I figure it's going to come out. What? Probably first half of next year. Yeah, I know your guess. I think you, you stuck a little bit more toward front half of 2024. Mm -hmm. I feel like, it could be a November. And I know we're, that's only eight months, but you're doing a like this November. Crime sh- yeah. Okay. You're doing a crime show on HBO. I don't know how much post that requires. Yeah. To where I think eight months from when it first started filming for a TV series. I, I think that's, I think it's really possible. Part of it, I'm not setting all my hopes that if they do say spring 2024, I'm not going to be like crushed and be like, Warner Brothers doesn't know what they're doing. It'll be like, oh, okay. I just kind of feel like, I feel like maybe November this year. Okay, if if it's ready to go, then start it, you know? Um, My my feeling is, you know, I think they're supposed to shoot till November, so I don't know. Okay. I don't know how that works, whether, you know. Then it's not coming out in November if they're. Well, I don't know. Do you? Because I don't know. Maybe I should ask FJ DeSanto because he's been a showrunner and uh, on things. uh, Mm -hmm. Friend of the show. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe do you do you start airing? While there do you film it like a tire season? Like I said, I just watched this. The last of us. Season one, do you film the entire season and then start releasing the episodes or 
do you release episodes while you're still filming that season? I don't know how that I works. Not, I've not, watched... not, not with this, I'm talking about this kind of TV when there's like six or eight episodes. You know what I mean? I think a lot of times, especially now, because a lot of things are really good as it starts. Okay, it's an eight episode season, eight consecutive weeks it comes out. Mm-hmm. There's no breaks or delays or anything like that. That I feel like when the first episode drops, it's like wrapping up post on episode seven and eight or something like that to where like by the time episode four airs seven and eight are completely done it's a wrap on that on the post-production on editing it's filming the farthest thing away from the penguin or any genre type of these these shows are i mean these prestige tv shows i i now sir rachel we do watch together the marvelous miss mazel hilarious Mm -hmm. I really like that that series. I know that because we we I discovered it late, and I binge watched all every episode of all the seasons that exist, and there's still one final season left that they they finished filming like late last year because I was like when googling you know that Google machine, yeah. When is the next season for Marvelous Miss Ma- Mrs. Maisel come out and that's when I found like uh, uh, they tweeted out like it's a wrap on the you know final season blah 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 and so they here next month in April they start airing the series so that there there's a case of they fin- they filmed the entire season and they're not releasing any episodes until a few months I feel like afterwards. that's much more likely sitcoms it's because it's like yeah, it's a I, weekly kind of scheduled that they are a couple of episodes ahead and you know it's in a studio and uh-huh. multi cameras and stuff like that um whereas the big dramas and stuff are more you know mixing of in a sound stage out on the street back and oh, yeah forth. like these so, like the ones you know these ones i watch you know this pinky blinders and a lot you know breaking bad mm-hmm. and all that stuff better call saul uh i mean that they almost have a movie type feel to them uh yeah production wise yeah you know what i mean yeah so it's a bigger it's a bigger deal which is just going to take longer or i shouldn't that's not degrading other it's it's a lot more involvement it's bigger in scale yeah scope so therefore it's going to take longer yeah and i think if what you said is correct of they're filming until november on this penguin series then yeah i think absolutely not it's gonna it's not coming out this year because I was, I, I was, I was now be more spring summer of next year. If yeah, that's filming, that was November. my basis for saying early next year. Which yeah. you know, if it is, if it is spring summer ish, first half, you know, you know, March, April, May, June, somewhere in there, then you you're kind of almost at that midpoint between the Batman and the Batman Part Two. My so when when not it necessarily first asked, has to be that chronologically you know set yeah. specifically right in the middle but uh my initially in my head when i asked you the question of when do you think we get a trailer i first thought august it's five months of filming movies have done teasers with just like fewer months than that of shooting yeah yeah before so I think for a TV series, um, I think I think that's possible. We'll see. I know nothing. Just guessing. If I had to guess, so, I don't know. When maybe we, August. Do you know when we got a teaser for Peacemaker? Before mm-hmm. how long before the series was released? That was wild because it came out in August of 2021. The The Suicide Squad came out in August 2021. And then Peacemaker debuted in January of 2022. So what are we at? Not even five months. And mm-hmm. I feel like when the movie came out, they started filming Peacemaker. So within five months, that show was was mm-hmm. streaming. So maybe like I don't know. Like maybe Penguin comes even quicker. I like I have no idea. I'm not involved in that production process. I do think I think November is from what I know, which is very, very little as far as i don't know i think i think it's possible but we'll wait and see when it comes i'll be there no matter how soon or far away that is well good times ahead yeah good time like i said enjoy the ride
Yeah. And this Do is you think be- Colin Farrell rides yeah. in a duck in this one? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It'll make Peter Vera's day if he's he has in a to. duck. <laughs> he has to because, of course, it's all connected. It's all connected, of course. It has to be. All right. Go ahead and yes. plug anything that you would like, and uh, we'll call it a uh, show. I'd like to plug two things because they're connected. Number one, yeah. check out the last Batman animation episode that Bill and I did. Go to batmanfilm.com. Check it out. Uh, Batman the Brave and the Bold episode, Chill of the Night. That was a good discussion. It was a longer discussion than what you and I do on Batman animation, but I think kind of warrants it for that episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's a really good episode. Watch it. Watch the episode. Listen to us talk about it or vice versa. And then one of the influences of that um, cartoon was The Untold Legend of the Batman, a 1980s three-issue miniseries written by Len Wein, illustrated by Jim Aparo. And I just covered that on my podcast, The Batman Book Club, which Bill has also generously posted on Mm -hmm. BatmanOnFilm.com. Um, and that is available now as well. And that too was a lengthy discussion because that's a like there's a lot of material in that story. Did you record that before or after we did talked about Chill of the Night? That that was before. And so that's what led me to that's what we both wanted to do. That's right. That's right. Okay. And I was like, actually, Chill of the Night's on my brain right now. If you want to talk about it, it's pretty fresh. And I watched it a couple of times. So those two things kind of go a little a little hand in hand. Um, I mean, that's a lot of content to listen to but if you're itching for it there's a lot of batman content right there so uh and then if you want to follow my the batman book club on twitter uh at the batman bc there sounds go. good i'll just say i get you back on that soon yeah i don't even know what story that we lined up of what we do next you can get back at me though but yeah i gotta get you back on there i'm going to pull something some single issue awesome pull that I'll, I'll yeah because that's that's my jam i wish they would go back to more of that of just one comic one story boom i'm all for whatever a batman story it is i like big epics this was eight issues 10 issues 12 issues yeah um but to not make sure that the recording is within reason mm-hmm. which the sweet spot has become like an hour 10 hour 15 um, the newest one is longer than that. I try to keep it within reason, though. And then it it's hard to do with the big stories because mm-hmm. there's so much to talk about. And then it does become like a relief when someone does choose one issue. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can read this two, three times before we record now. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of like a little bit ah, like a relief. And I do like like random polls. I'd be like, yeah, this single issue that came out in, you know, 1979. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Dig deep. Go to those long boxes, Bill. Yeah. Find the one. All right. You can find everything I would plug over at batmanonfilm.com. Batman-on-film.com. The uh, only thing else I will mention other than that is uh, if you want to help support Batman on Film, you can go to T Public and buy, oh, well, brand new, the Batman on Film 25th anniversary logo. T-shirts, merchandise can be found at tpublic.com slash Batman on film. Uh, very cool. Batman on 25, BOF 25 logo created by Justin Kowalski. Thanks. Shout out uh, to Justin and a big thanks. Check those out. Um, and um, let's see. T-Pop Patreon, Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Batman on film. Help keep this uh, website and these podcasts going and that's about it bunch of cool stuff over there uh check out our bat i like to really like the batman animation batman animation i always have to double check my pronunciation of that those are good those are good shows so check all those out anyway yep. it's all on batman on film so with that thanks for listening uh announcer rachel will take us out plug some more stuff and we'll catch you next time thanks for listening to the bof social hour jet's official vlog and podcast on batman on film follow jet on twitter at batman on film follow the bof news feed on twitter at the batman on film for jet and everyone at bof i'm announcer rachel authoritative definitive 
the original Batman on film, established in 1998.